Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today we're gonna to be taking the Integra with the K24 swap out for a little rip. And I uh, just kinda of wanted to bring you guys along and uh, take this thing for a ride. I've done some finishing touches on the car uh, recently. Uh, just like got the radio working, got the gas gauge working, the coolant temp gauge, all the stuff that kind of wasn't working when I initially bought the car. And I recently just put in some door speakers and got the back speakers working as well. The radio was working, but the speakers weren't producing sound. So I got all that working now and uh, took it out for a ride yesterday and got some data logs uh, with the K-Pro. I brought it home and I'm just gonna kinda show you guys a little bit with the closed loop on K-Pro and we're gonna try to make some adjustments and make this car um, make the tune a lot closer and just uh, kind of show you along for the ride. Um, earlier today, uh, if you guys saw, you know, the little intro or whatever I made today, kind of silly, but uh, just got done filling some injector orders for huntertune.com. If you guys are in the market for a turbocharger or some injectors or wastegates or blow off valves or anything like that, um, and you have any questions, feel free to email me, huntertuned at gmail.com. Um, I only have one set of flex injectors left right now and I have I think like two sets of normals uh, but I plan on continuing to keep them in stock as best I can and uh, get orders shipped out as fast as possible. Also every order, uh, every injector order that you guys are placing now is coming with a Hunter Tuned sticker. So if you guys enjoy, uh, order injectors, uh, the decapped injectors, they come with a Hunter Tuned sticker. So let's look at some data log here off of the K-Pro. Um, I haven't used the closed loop function uh, very much on K-Pro, but I figured I'd try it out because I do have my wideband wired into the ECU. And I just wanted to see kind of how close the air fuel was because I completely changed the tune for methanol and I just put the car back on E85 and it needs a lot of cleanup work to be done. So you can see uh, up here, we are going to uh, show you a little bit. This is, I'm data logging the closed loop right here, and this is a wide open throttle pull that I did last night on the street. You can see here, uh, right when we floored it, uh, my TPS is only going to 88 right now, which isn't a big deal, but uh, you can see when the throttle comes up there. So uh, the red line here, right here where my fingertip is, is our actual air fuel and you can see it dips down there and kind of traces along this blue line is the correction so this is the short-term fuel trim which the short-term fuel trim is pretty much how much the computer is compensating that's the cool thing about closed loop is you can just target a air fuel ratio and the computer will adjust uh, the tune according to how far off the air fuel is. Um, realistically, you want to be as close to, you know, 5% plus or minus in either direction is the best. Um, if you can get closer to zero, that's even better. But if it's correcting more than, you know, 5% or so, that's when you kind of want to make sure that you clean stuff up a little bit. So this car runs really good. I'm targeting a 12.9 air fuel before VTEC. And in VTEC, I'm commanding a 12.8 air fuel. Um, and you can see our, our short-term trim is pulling 16% here, pulling 21% here. Um, and this is just because of the methanol tune that was in the car. Methanol requires more fuel. So when you put E85 in, it's going to run richer. So that's what we're doing. We're cleaning this thing up. And uh, we're just gonna kind of go along uh, each little spot here. And I'm going to adjust the fuel map at what the short-term trim is telling me to adjust. So we're gonna do those changes quick, and then we're gonna take the car out for another ride, take another data log, and then come back and see how close we are instead. So uh, after the changes are made, I should say. Uh, big deal right here is right when VTEC crosses over at like 4,000 RPM or so, 4,200, uh, this thing is pulling 10% uh, fuel. So we're gonna have to pull out fuel. You can see it goes down to like an 11.4, 11.5 right here. So we're gonna go onto the tables and we're gonna go to the VTEC side. I think my file might have gotten corrupted. You can see there's a, zero, a random zero right here. So I'm actually just going to uh, fix this 
real quick. Just interpolating vertically so it fixes that. You can see there's blotches and shit over here too, which we gotta try to uh, sort out. Even though that we're never gonna be able to, we're never gonna hit those sections of the map, I still wanna make it uh, smooth. Uh, now we're gonna go back to the graph and we're gonna click on that rich spot. So right here, right when it went rich, uh, you can see it was like an 11.4 air fuel. And you can see right here where it's white is where the where it needs adjustment. So we're gonna take everything from 4,500 and below, and I'm just gonna yank out, uh, I don't know, probably 12%. And then you can see, because VTEC is so low, this is gonna wanna ramp in pretty hard, um, you know, as it goes up in RPM, because the cam just isn't quite efficient down there. I um, mean, it's gonna need less fuel right when VTEC cracks. This is really common when you do a, when you set your VTEC point really low, whether it's on a B series or a D series or a K series, um, the power will be smooth on the dyno, but you're not gonna get that kick in the pants when VTEC hits. You want it to be nice and smooth, and when it's smooth, you're usually faster. Uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't give you that like kick when VTEC hits, um, which is kind of fun, you know? Some guys like that, but your dyno curve is going to kind of be coming up, 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 and then it's gonna go bop, and it's gonna jump, which you don't want. Like I said, it's cool feeling, but at the end of the day, it's not, you know, the best way to tune the engine because you're gonna, you have a, it's almost like a, a mini, little mini nitrous hit uh, for the engine, which is hard on parts. So now uh, we got that section adjusted. Now we're gonna go back to the graph and we're gonna go up to say 5K because we adjusted from 4,500 and below. So down here is the RPM. We can go up to like 5K or 4,700, 4,800. And you can see our short-term trim is still pulling 12%, but our air fuel was 12.8. So this is all pretty rich in here because it's pulling 14% in order to get a 12.8 air fuel. So down here, it says it's only pulling 8%, but it actually went rich. The closed loop couldn't react fast enough to that situation. So um, I'm going to go through here, and this is all negative 14, negative 12, up until about 5K. So if we go to 4,500 to 5K, I'm gonna pull out another 10%, and then I'm probably gonna have to pull even more down here. I'm just anticipating because the closed loop couldn't react fast enough. And then we're gonna smooth and interpolate this. Mainly just gonna interpolate it vertically because you can see our values go from 54, 48 right here, and then they go 51, 60, and then back up. So we want the fuel to be gradually coming in, not you know, being wavy like that. So we're gonna interpolate vertically. There we go. So now we're gonna move on to 5,200 and above. This is all the same, about 10, 12%, up to 5,500. So we can go 5,500 to 5K or so, and pull out another 10. And then we can go to the graph, keep moving along here. We'll go up to about six grand. And you can see between like 5,500 and six grand, we're having to pull a little bit more because it's getting even, it's pulling even more fuel on the closed loop. So we're gonna go back here, go up to 6K or 6,200. And we're actually gonna pull out about 15%. And we're gonna try to smooth out these little bumps and stuff too. So we can actually go through and highlight this section right here. That's got a high spot. And we're gonna bring that down. So we're gonna interpolate this here quick. And you can see now we got rid of that high spot so it's nice and smooth. And then way up top, you know, up here, we're gonna wanna pull some out and bring this down because that's when our power curve is falling off. Your fuel map right here, the 2D table is gonna kinda wanna follow the power curve. So when the power starts dying off, you're gonna wanna taper this fuel out. All right guys, so now that we got the changes done, uh, I'm gonna show you kind of what the fuel table should look like. 
on the VTEC side, you can see that it's coming up now and then leveling off instead of just straight up and down like that. Um, you know, it's going to want to follow the power curve, like I was saying. I've been trying to tune with the graphs a little bit more um, instead of just using the, uh, the numbers on the fuel table and picking sections and tuning it that way. I've been using the graph uh, to tune a little bit more and using the closed loop stuff uh, gets you a lot closer with one change because um, you're not, you know, just kind of guessing at the wideband. You can actually see the exact change that you need to make doing it this way. So I'm going to get this uploaded into the car and then we will take the car for a little ride, go beat on it a little bit, have some fun, and then come back and talk about it a little bit more. All right, guys, I got the GoPro set up in the car and uh, yeah, we're just all cruising in the Integra. Unfortunately, the weather has been kind of crappy lately, so it's been, it's been really cold and raining and cloudy and yeah not great so the roads are dry figured get out and make some videos on the street with the Integra I still got to get a the alignment isn't bad you can see it drives pretty straight but uh, the steering wheel is cocked a little bit still and I'm gonna try to fix that and uh, yeah but running down the road about 50 miles an hour Air fuel is perfect because the closed loop is doing its job. So if we go on the data log, uh, you guys will just have to take my word for it because my GoPro is mounted to my sunroof. Um, currently the short term trim is adding 6% fuel to cruise at my target air fuel of 15 ohm. So, um, the closed loop stuff works pretty good on K-Pro. I think it works a lot better on K-Pro than it does S300. Um, I think mainly because the ECU from the factory uh, is wideband capable, where a OBD1 on the computer is only a narrow band. I still have to get a gauge for this hole. I was gonna get like an oil pressure gauge or something probably. the Integra a little bit on the K-Pro and uh, I was messing with this right down here is speedometer correction and I was changing this percentage number and it wasn't doing anything to my gauge cluster speedometer it, this wouldn't change no matter what I did to that value um, so I think what that does is it takes the input from the cluster and it changes it so the ECU sees a different speed so like if you were doing boost by gear um, the ECU speed might be different but the gauge cluster speed is not changing so I can't verify that for sure but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here and I said we were gonna look at the graph of the last data log Let's see here so this is our wide open run on the last data log and you can see our red line is air fuel and you can see there's no more drop off on the lower end 
it, if anything, it goes a little lean for a second. So I pulled out a little too much fuel uh, in VTAC. So we're going to have to put a little bit back in. We'll go back to the data log. You can see right beforehand, uh, so before VTEC, it is a little uh, rich as well. So we can probably pull out a little bit. And in VTEC, we went lean right at the crossover instead of rich. So that's good. And then our trim here in the center, 0% where we are adjusting. So that spot's good now. Um, we're negative 3% here, negative 4% here. So up until about 50, 200 we're pretty much right on the money after 5300 we're still a little rich it's pulling at eight percent nine percent but that's a lot better than it was pulling 15 or 20 before so i'm gonna go through do another change to it we're gonna have to pull out another probably five percent between about 5200 5200 and let's see here 5200 and between 52 and 6200, we're gonna yank out another like five or so percent. <laughs> Do seven. Back to the graph. Sorry, I'm really bad at filming with this fucking tripod in my car. Um, 6200 till pretty much red line. We're still really rich. So we'll go from 6,500. to 65, we're gonna pull like 12 or so. 62 to 65 in here. do another rip um, it should be a lot closer now like I said above like 7,000 rpm or so it was pulling like 20% fuel to obtain my target air fuel so I just pulled out some more we're gonna give it a whirl all right guys let's give her a rip I'm just doing fourth gear pulls right now because I'm getting the tune Perfect. changes to the fuel map like uh, light throttle VTAC crossover 
I know when I'm on the highway a lot and the VTEC crossed over, it would go really rich or really lean. So I just uh, pretty much copied the low cam, light throttle tables, pasted them into the VTEC side and added a few percent. And now, and then just adjusted a couple little small transition spots, light throttle. So now if I'm just cruising and VTEC cracks at like say 10% throttle, the air fuel doesn't even change. It's like perfect. It crossed over into VTEC and you couldn't even tell. Like I said before, light throttle, when you'd crack into it, it would it would kind of be like Bleh, for a second. You know, it kind of hesitate, but now it's like seamless. the uh, two-step the launch control I've never actually used the launch control on this car before oh, oh yeah I bet you if we do that in second gear it's just gonna roll big rolling burnout let's do it that launch control sounded sick though I would have brought 
brought my uh, draggy with me, then we could have got a eighth mile or quarter mile time out of this thing on the street with street tires. That would have been cool, but I forgot to bring it with me. Maybe, maybe next time. I'm just going to do a roll on from first gear, and then uh, we'll head her back to the house. I'll probably punch it at like 4k All right guys, so we just got back home with the Integra. I got the EF actually back at my house too because I don't know, just felt like having it at home so I can drive it whenever I want. So I might be making a driving video with the EF as well uh, pretty soon. I just gotta get the headlights and stuff wired up like I just did on the Integra. You can see that it's got the halo um, rings around the LED headlights and I think it looks really nice. Um, yeah, super happy with that. So um, before I made this video, I actually made another video talking about some of the stuff that, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to do this year. And a lot of it was just trying to focus on my website and stuff like that. So I might throw those clips in right now, take them with a grain of salt, but I do have the Integra actually up for sale right now. I might throw those clips in right here and uh, you guys can just kind of hear my train of thought what was going on in my head and uh you know if i still think that or not i don't know but the car is up for sale right now if i do get any serious buyers for it i may consider selling well my camera died again so sorry but uh so anyways i was thinking um you know over the last couple months last year or so i've been really burnt out with cars um you know, I, I appreciate doing it for a job and I'm very blessed to be able to do it as a job. Um, and with my website and stuff like that, selling injectors and the turbos and everything like that and being able to help you guys out as much as possible, I get way more enjoyment out of than uh, dyno tuning cars every day because uh, from my experience, just doing the dyno tuning all the time um, is really stressful and it makes me not even want to look at cars at the end of the day, which I hate because I really love enjoying cars and showing you guys everything about cars. Um, but for the majority of the time I'm not working, the my passion has really kind of been with my motorcycles and my Groms, my new Honda Monkey. I just did the CBR 250. Um, that's kind of where like my free time when I have it, that's where I want to spend it. And that's kind of how I've been lately. But I still after like i haven't done dyno tuning for customers for a little while because i've been uh just trying to focus on myself and figure out like how to approach this growing business that i'm doing which i never would have even i never thought it would be this big if i'd have thought it would have been this big i probably would have planned a little differently but um i didn't think you know like i said i'd be doing as much stuff on the website and all that um 
And I feel like if I focused a lot of my work time towards that stuff, I could do pretty good. And it's less stressful to me. I almost enjoy doing like, you know, getting back to everybody online and um, doing messages and stuff like that. And you guys appreciate it way more too, like if I get back to people. But it, when I'm busy dynoing and stuff all the time, it's not as easy to, to get back to everybody and do all the stuff I'm doing because I'm a one man show. Um, and the reason kind of cars have been on the back burner for me too is because like, I don't have a lot of my friends and stuff now, uh, they're just not into cars as much. Like, you know, we don't go hooning out on the streets anymore. We don't do a lot of that stuff anymore. I don't know if we're just getting old or what. Um, I still enjoy doing it. I just don't do it as much with friends and you know, when you're doing it by yourself, it gets kind of old. So, gonna do more with the EF here pretty soon. Uh, the Mustang, the Integra, my new truck I just picked up. Like, I have four vehicles right now, and I just don't feel like I need that much. Like, I don't. I like the bikes. Um, I just have a lot on my plate, so it's tough to, like, decipher what is the best plan for me to focus my attention towards. Um, you know, I used to do one car at a time, and that's kind of the best, the best way, I think. Uh, focus on one at a time so you're not overwhelmed and I've been nothing but overwhelmed uh, Lately and it's currently freezing outside Still so the weather hasn't cooperated for wanting to do car stuff or wanting to do anything really um, I'm, sh I'm sure spring and summer are all kind of spark me back up again, but It's just kind of what I've been feeling lately. Like I said the Integra is up for sale. The EF is actually up for sale um you know everything's for sale at the right price uh just because i get more like interested in doing new stuff all the time you know ooh, new car new this new that i don't know it's more enjoyable that way for me instead of like having cars that just sit and never get used like these cars do this is the first time i drove my integra in months i just don't drive them anymore because i don't know i'd prefer to just get in my new truck <laughs> every day you know what i mean so uh anyways let me know what you guys think I'm just blabbing at this point, but trying to decipher where to where to uh, focus my time and energy more so, and uh, this, try to do it the smartest and least stressful way possible. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Like I said, I have a ton of clips of me just sitting on the camera bitching about all this. If you guys want to hear about it, let me know. Maybe I'll throw it all together in a video, but I doubt it. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and like I said too, like the more dyno tuning and the more customer work that I'm doing all the time, the less I want to do YouTube. And I feel like my real passion is talking to the camera, doing stuff for making videos, uh, working on some of my own stuff. And, uh, I just wish I could make more money doing it because, you know, I'm not boosted boys. I'm not Cletus or I'm not any of these bigger YouTubers where I can afford to have four cars and build all of them. You know what I mean? Without doing all this other work that I'm doing with my website and every stuff like that. So I'm, I'm very thankful you guys uh, being patient in between uploads lately. I've been kind of slack and I used to do videos all the time, like at least like every other day or something. And they've not been like that for a while. And that's kind of why. I just gotta, yeah, if I made more money on YouTube, it wouldn't matter. I would just do this shit all the time because it's, I don't know, it's probably more entertaining, more enjoyable for you guys. You guys probably learn more. Um, and I feel like a tuning school would probably be almost better, or just doing tuning videos like this, because I don't know what the EPA shit going on. You know, there's a bunch of local shops around here now that uh, all got shut down. You know, they're not doing dyno tuning anymore. I don't want that to be me, <laughs> you know? So that's another shitting thing that's kind of scary, but... I'm kind of a small fish, so I don't know if it'll matter to me, but I don't know. I'm just trying to help people out and do this uh, and enjoy it as much as possible, but I still need to make a living. <laughs> um, so yeah, have a great night, better tomorrow. See you later.